Okay, so here's our yield of petri dishes. I made 24 plates with 500 mils of solution. Today I'm gonna to be making some agar plates for mushroom culture as well as bacterial culture, whatever your applications are. The first main ingredient that I'm using is this powdered agar, which I got from Jeff Bezos himself. Just on Amazon you can find this. I think it was only like $20 for 100 grams. It makes about four liters which would make 40 plates per liter, 44 times 4, 160. This one bag of agar should make about 200 uh, standard 40 millimeter Petri dishes, which is really good. You can actually stretch it probably even further than that if you really want to. The other thing we're gonna need is just a container to sterilize our agar solution in. We're gonna need a scale. And I'm using this test tube uh, in order to sterilize some water. So what we're gonna do with the sterilized water is once it cools, we're going to add antibiotics to it because we can't add the antibiotics directly to the flask before we sterilize it because high temperatures will destroy the antibiotics. So this is really similar to my liquid culture video, which I'll put a link or a little card up in the corner here. Okay, so let's get started. This bag says 23 grams of agar for one liter of distilled water. We're gonna cut that in half. Even though we have a one liter container here, you can use any container by, by the way, but even though we have a one liter container here, we don't wanna fill it up all the way up here because again, this is gonna be boiling in the microwave and there's a thing called bumping if you've ever worked in a chemistry or biology lab, you've probably experienced this. And maybe even at home, you know, you might have experienced throwing a cup of coffee in the microwave and you pull it out and you add a little bit of sugar and it just all of a sudden all boils. Or you put water, a cup of water in the microwave to make some tea and when you put the tea bag in, it all just erupts. And this happens a lot in labs because you have very pure ingredients and so the water doesn't have, I guess, nucleation sites in order for that boiling to start. So we're just gonna wanna be careful of that because the microwave can get it up to really high temperatures really quickly without disturbing the solution. And so boiling will be less likely and bumping will be more likely. We're gonna microwave this container in batches essentially. Okay, so enough talking, let's get to it. I'm gonna weigh out the agar. So we're gonna do about 11 grams of this agar, maybe 12 grams. Honestly, the accuracy of what you weigh out really doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you're close enough, you'll be fine. Okay, so another thing I didn't mention is there's this really, really cool trick that you can do with your liquid cultures, with your agar plates, is that if you know the substrate that your fungi or bacteria or whatever is gonna grow in in the next transfer, then you should add a little bit of that substrate to your plates or to your liquid culture. And what this does is it sort of gives a head start to whatever organism you're growing. So for example, the genes that break down brown sugar are gonna be off for any fungi or bacteria that are growing in this substrate. But if we add a little bit of brown sugar, then the genetics of our organism will be sort of prepared. So you know you have genetic code, but then you also have some epigenetic effects going on there where genes will either be turned on or off depending on the environment that the organism is growing in. So anyway, I'm using brown sugar because generally in my liquid cultures, I use this as the carbon source. So, you know, whatever organisms I'm growing will be adjusted to growing on this substrate. I'm actually gonna be slick and just add the brown sugar to the water that I'm gonna add. Okay, so I did 475 grams of water, that's including a little bit of brown sugar. So a little less than 500 mils of water, and that's because to some of our plates, we're gonna be adding this antibiotic solution. Okay, so we have our agar solution going in the microwave. This is our sterilization procedure. If you're in a lab, of course, you'd use something like an autoclave, but uh, I don't have an autoclave or a pressure cooker or anything like that. So we're using a microwave, it works. Okay, so Everything is done. You can see this is still boiling. Once everything comes together and you're up to boiling point, this solution usually goes a much more clear color. One of the things I usually do is I'll grab the top of the beaker with a hot pad and swirl it around. And this is usually when the bumping happens. So just start really slowly if you think it's hot um, and then mix a little faster because sometimes there is a little bit of sediment 
at the bottom from the agar that you have to mix up. The other thing I'm gonna do is take this little sheet of foil and just drape it over the top. It doesn't have to be super tight. I just wanna put it up there so that no contaminants can fall in while this is cooling. This was only boiling in the microwave for maybe one to three minutes somewhere within there, but that should be enough to sterilize everything. Now we just gotta wait for this to cool, gotta wait for this to cool to add our antibiotics, and then we'll start pouring the plates. Okay, so our agar solution is still pretty hot. I can touch it for a few seconds. Um, if you let it cool down too much, it'll start solidifying in the container. So, you know, it might be a little better to pour hot than to pour a little too cold. The next thing I'm gonna prepare is the antibiotic solution. So this is definitely cool to the touch because it's a much smaller container, cooled much faster. The antibiotics that I'll be using today are doxycycline as well as cephalexin. So <laughs> if you have irresponsible friends that don't finish their antibiotics, or if uh, you're <laughs> irresponsible and don't finish your antibiotics, this is a good opportunity. And it's also a good idea to use to antibiotics because bacteria can quickly evolve antibiotic resistance to one antibiotic, but it's a little bit harder for them to manage two at a time. Three might be even more fun. So all the antibiotics that I've seen come in two flavors. They either have this pill, and I've, I think I showed this in the liquid culture video, but they either have this pill that you can just twist and open up and there's a powder inside or they're a solid tablet that you need to crush. So in this case, it's this pill that you can open up. Generally, one pill should be able to treat one liter of solution. So we're using half of a liter, so we're gonna use half of this pill. And this comes from, in lab, you generally want about 500 milligrams per liter of most antibiotics. This includes cephalexin and penicillin. Usually these pills are 500 milligram capsules. This one's a 100 milligram capsule, I'm assuming because it's a more potent antibiotic. So I'm still gonna use half of it, you know, just sort of assuming that uh, one dosage is equivalent to one liter of solution being treated. And that 500 milligrams per liter value, that's what I used when I was in the lab. And you can also look up some papers and find that that's the value that a lot of labs use. So the other thing I wanna do is work under flame. So working under flame basically means you have a candle or an alcohol lamp next to wherever you're working. And what this does is it creates an updraft of air. So it's not burning the bacteria that might fall in or the spores that might fall in, but it's creating this updraft. So rather than air being pushed downward and particles falling into your solutions, you're pulling the air upward, so it's less likely that things will fall in. Another thing we will do to increase the st sterility of our work is we're going to make sure that when we open our containers, it's only for a brief moment, just enough time to put anything we need to in. Lastly, what I wanna do is spray the work surface as well as my hands all the way up to my elbows, wipe them down with just 70% at least isopropyl alcohol. Uh, and this is sort of dangerous with an open flame nearby, but I'll try to be careful. Okay, so any container that we're gonna open, we're gonna try to have as close to our flame as possible, and any closed containers can be further away from the flame. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add about half of this antibiotic pill. This is the doxycycline. You also want to put caps up on work surfaces. Ooh. Okay, that one was much better. So this is our antibiotic solution. I'm actually gonna pour a few plates without antibiotics because I have some experiments planned. Then I'm gonna add some of this antibiotic solution for the antibiotic plates. And then I'm actually gonna pour some plates with this methylene blue dye as well for another experiment that I'm doing. 
But if you're just doing it to do plate transfers and to grow fungi, just add all this antibiotic and pour your plates in your golden. Okay, so the plates that I got is this 20 pack. I just got it from Jeff Bezos as well, amazon.com. So I think what I wanna do is pour half of the plates without antibiotics and half with. So these Petri dishes are sterile. So I'm making sure to open them next to the flame. Again, my hands are sprayed with alcohol. Okay, so what I've done is I've split the stack of plates in half. And so there's sort of a finesse technique that uh, I might be a little rusty on, but we'll try here. I wasn't talking during that because talking is equivalent to breathing on things, which can add contamination, especially with these plates without antibiotics. That's really important. So as you saw, I sort of lifted the whole stack except for the bottom tray, poured in, dropped the lid of the bottom one and the base of the next one and picked up the stack above and poured it. It's just a little bit of a quicker uh, and more efficient way to pour your plates. The other thing you might have noticed or what I should have been doing is I like to pour them a little under if anything. I'll pour it until I see there's just a small section of the plate that's not covered and I'll stop and then once I pour all of them I can just tilt the plate around because really you know if you have a thick layer of agar that isn't going to be any more advantageous than having a thin layer because whatever organism you're growing is mostly growing on the surface anyway because that's where the oxygen is. Okay, opening the next stack of plates. And again, for this second set, I'm going to add half of our antibiotic solution because I've prepared enough for half a liter, but I've already poured 250 mils, so we're only gonna need about half of this, so. That's pretty good. The antibiotic concentration really doesn't have to be perfect. These last few plates, I'm gonna pour with some methylene blue dye. Okay, so here's our yield of Petri dishes. I made 24 plates with 500 mils of solution. So that's pretty good. These will probably last me a while. The last thing I do is just put them back sort of slipped into their original box so that they're easy to take out when I need them. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something.